Hey guys, this is Ken from jazztime.com and today we'll be comparing the Rolex Datejust 31, reference number 178240, and that's the watch here on my left. On the right, we have, we'll be comparing it with the Cartier Tank uh, Solo, reference number W520013, okay? We'll be going over the price, the dials, bezel, uh, case, crown, uh, bracelet, uh, class and the movement towards the end of the video okay so as so as of January 2017 you can get the Rolex Datejust 31 for at a Rolex retailer for six thousand two hundred dollars or you can get it at jazztime.com for five thousand three hundred dollars rather as low as five thousand three hundred dollars for the Cartier tank solo you can get this at a Cartier retailer for $2,650 or you can get it at Jazzan for as low as $2,400. Okay. Hopefully this video will help you uh, decide whether or not that th almost $3,000 price difference in these two watches is really well worth it. Okay. So let's go ahead and review, review the, the dials now. So obviously from the Obviously you can see that the dials are different in shape. Rolex has a more circular dial, while the Cartier has a more rectangular dial. One thing I want to point out is that the index mark, uh, that the hour markers for the Rolex uh, Datejust is index markers. They are luminescent for up to eight hours and they're fashioned in 18 karat white gold. Along with the hands, they're also uh, luminescent at the tips for up to eight hours and they're also made out of the 18 karat white gold. For the Cartier, we just have very basic, uh, very basic Roman numerals around the dial with blue steel, uh, blue steel sword hands. So the visibility on this on the Cartier will be very limited during uh, during the night, as the Rolex will be will have that nice uh, glow for up to eight hours. Another thing to mention is that the date. Is located at the three o'clock position at the on the date just has a cyclops lens on top for easier viewing and magnification of that date while well, the cartier does not have anything similar to that uh, one thing i want to mention is that with the date uh, with the rolex date just as well there are many different configurations for the date just compared to the cartier tank for the t uh, for the date just you have the ability to choose either index or roman uh, roman hour markers uh, the dial color can be uh, can be blue, black, white, silver, and pink. And the and the bracelet can be either oyster or jubilee. For the Cartier tank, uh, you only have the choice of having it on the steel strap or the leather strap. And the case material being either the yellow gold or the steel. There's no real changes you can make with the index, uh, with the hour markers or the dial color. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the bezel. Uh, Cartier doesn't really have a bezel, but the Rolex does. If you want to count the size of the case as a, the size of the case as a bezel, you can. Uh, it has a very nice high polish on both on both of these. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that for the be the bezel on the case is that the Rolex uses a in-house 904L steel that they make. Uh, versus the versus the Cartier's and industry standard 316L steel. Uh, main differences between that is that the 904L steel has much more vibrance to it. The steel is uh, a little bit more shinier, easier to polish, and more durable compared to that 316L steel. Okay, for the case size, the Rolex is a 31 millimeter, as I mentioned before. That's from my index finger to my thumb here. That's 31 millimeters in diameter. The Cartier. <clears throat> It is 31 millimeters from top to top to bottom, um, while the width of it is 24, uh, 24 and a half millimeters. And for the profiles, for the profiles of the case, for the profiles of the watches, you can see here. The Cartier has a much slimmer profile compared to the Rolex, the Rolex Datejust. Um, the Cartier, the actual th uh, thickness of the Cartier is five and a half millimeters. So you can see the Rolex almost has almost a bit, almost double that. But either way, either one will fit under dress cuffs, suit cuffs very nicely, very easily. Okay. For the crown, let's go ahead and move on to the crown now. For 
for the crown, we have Rolex's typical uh, twin lock double waterproofness system crown with the Rolex crown engraved onto it. While uh, the Tank Solo has a blue, I believe a sapphire crystal, or I apologize, a <clears throat> beaded crown set with a synthetic spinel cabochon on the right here. See that? Okay. Um, however, the water, the water resistance that the crown, uh, the water resistance of these watches uh, are much different. The, the Datejust has a water resistance of uh, 100 meters to 330 feet, while the Tank Solo only has a 30 millimeter, uh, 30 meters or 100 feet of water resistance. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the bracelets now. Okay, so this is the bracelet of the of the Rolex. It's an oyster bracelet with three piece links. Has a very nice high polish down the center. The Cartier is kind of uh, opposite of that. Here's the Cartier's. It has the it's a three piece link, but it has the satin finish in the center portion of the links, while the outer portion and the tops of those links are high polished. Okay, as you can see there. The bracelet on the Cartier is a little bit bigger, and that's just to match the overall pattern of the watch. Um, as you can as you can see, it patterns very nicely all around with the case, keeps a nice uniform shape. While the Rolex, while the Rolex does have tries to keep that uniform shape, but I believe the contrast the contrast of the brushed steel on the outer edges and the high polish are much nicer. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the class now. So for the class. Rolex has a very basic uh, folding oyster class, while the Cartier has a hidden butterfly deployment um, for the class. So I'll go ahead and sh show you how to use both of those. So what I'm holding right now is the Rolex. As you can see there, very easy, very simple. Cr uh, <clears throat> folds out, has a Rolex name engraved onto the clasp blade itself there. As you can see, very simple. Bam. For the Cartier, the class is hidden underneath. The class is hidden underneath the bracelet, as you can see from there. There's a butterfly deployment, so it comes off both sides. Apologize here. Oops. Okay, sorry about that. Having a little trouble. There you are. So that's one side off. And that's the other side off. So very nice to have that kind of, kind of hidden class there. So it keeps the overall pattern very nice. But both for, both of these are just as secure as the other. Okay. So there's that. Now let's go ahead and move on to the last thing, which is the movement. And we'll talk about the movements. So with the Rolex, we have this very nice, very simple uh, oyster case. It houses, it houses the Rolex in-house movement, which is the, a perpetual mechanical self-winding caliber 2235 uh, movement. It has a precision of minus two plus two seconds a day. Uh, has the functions of the center hour, minute, second hand with instantaneous changing of the date and uh, stopping of the seconds for precise time setting. Um, the power reserve of this watch is 48 hours, so that means you can put it down on a Friday and pick it up on a Sunday evening and it'll still be keeping time uh, very nicely. Um, <clears throat> besides that, it's a very, it's a very, it's a very good, it's a very good movement um, versus the Cartier, which I'm picking up here, this is a Cartier. It's just a very, very simple, that stainless steel uh, stainless steel case backing with the screws at the corners. Um, specifically for the Cartier movement, it's a quartz movement, meaning that it is battery powered. It is very precise, but you do have to change the battery uh, every now and every now and then. Okay. So with the difference, the difference between that is that with the Rolex, 
you can just have this on you can have this Rolex on your on your wrist and you can just be walking around and it'll still and it'll still power itself in that way because of the oscillating weight which keeps the watch winding as you move with that kinetic energy whereas a tank solo is just battery powered once the battery is dead you just have to replace it okay so let me go ahead and show you guys this watch on the wrist we'll start with the Rolex first pops open like that on the wrist Okay, I have a I have an average size wrist. I have a seven and a half inch wrist, so this is almost like a perfect fit on the on that size wrist. Okay, so here is the date just first. Very nice, not too big, profile not too high. Let me go ahead and get the Cartier on now. Fortunately, I don't have a lot of trouble with this butterfly deployment. There we go. There we go. Very simple, nice and concealed. Actually, okay. So that's the Cartier on my wrist. Um, I don't really want to buckle it in. It might actually, yeah, it should fit. There we go. So this one is a little bit tighter, tighter on the wrist compared to the Rolex. As you can see there, this is more of a ladies' watch, so <clears throat> it should fit a little bit smaller of a wrist than mine. Like I said, I have an average man's wrist of seven and a half inches, and that's how it looks on the wrist. It's a profile, not very high at all. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see there. Okay, so if you're interested if, if you're interested in purchasing any of these watches for the lowest possible price, check out our website at jazztime.com. That's J-A-Z-T-I-M-E.com. We have the lowest prices guaranteed. We offer free shipping and a one-year warranty. <clears throat> if you liked the video, please like, comment, and subscribe below. We've got lots more to show you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys soon.